Hey guys, welcome to the CBZ Rack Show, the hottest and the littest uh, schoolboy rugby show coming out of Zimbabwe right now. My name is Robbie Durant. My name is Ruben Bochakureka. A lot to talk about today. We're going to give you the full lineup of that. But we were at two different games, uh, Robbie, over the weekend, and um, I slightly enjoyed mine but you had a cracker uh, with yours where were you this weekend by the way uh, i covered the st john's versus falcon it was probably one of the best games i've watched at school level this year 2023 and let me tell you uh the falcon disallowed try mm -hmm. was if not could have been uh the try of the season so far for me to be honest all right uh, but but you weren't alone in actually watching that match were you no, well, I had Jan Ferreira, so that, yeah. that, there's, a lot, there's a lot that comes with Jan Ferreira that I can tell you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I, I had my uh, family that was supporting me, mm -hmm. and it was so cool to have them uh, just uh, giving a bit of uh, inspiration to me when I took the camera to them. Uh, I came here for you. <laughs> oh. Awesome. Um, it's amazing to watch the boys come together and actually fight with each other and the crowds and the family and everybody is so excited. It's such a lovely day out. Why did you come to rugby? To watch my dad. Ah. <laughs> well, very, very special. Thank you, Nolene. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I certainly appreciated your support. It's so important to have family support as well, Ruby. Uh, your trip to the Gandhi, Lama Gandhi, how was it? Oh, <laughs> yes, it, it, it was good. It was a boys' trip. So it was, uh, oh, then that's good. <laughs> you know, we could have done a couple of war cries, but, but yeah, we decided to keep it sane and good. And um, yeah, actually, guess who was there uh, driving us? Uh, it was the producer, uh, Jason. He does a great job on the show, Absolutely. as always. But uh, this time around, he was driving. Okay, coming again. So, here we have it uh, on our way to Loma Gandhi. Uh, we're going to be doing the Loma Gandhi Churchill game. We've changed the driver this time around. Hi, guys. Uh, that's Jace. Jason is going to be doing it. Our cameraman. Oh, yo, oh, yo. Oh, yes, we're going for it. Uh, we've relegated uh, Ian all the way to the back. Uh, and, of course, we've got Jason Jr., yeah, he's also joining us on the trip, so it's going to be good times. Uh, well, my money is on Churchill, because I'm an old boy. Churchill, you know how we do. Uh, Loma Gandhi, though, came through with a big win, so let's see how that one goes. Uh, we've left Nyabira there. We haven't yet hit the likes of um, Banquet and so on, which come before Chinoy. So let's see how all of that works out, but... It's gonna be good times. Bisons <laughs> taking on the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. Yes, man, on the Kairos thing and CBZ Rad Show. Woo. Well, it's good to get the behind scenes and obviously seeing Jason there driving the crew, getting them there and back safely, even though it was late. Uh, a big ups to you, Jason. Um, you, it's all covered here on the CBZ Rack Show. We give you the behind the scenes. We show you exactly what's happening at all these games. Reminder, please make sure that you follow us on our social medias, uh, platforms, Kairos Sports. A uh, lot has happened this weekend. We have a lot to cover on the CBZ Rack Show. Oh, yes, sir. just so much to talk about today. And uh, I'm sure many of you have been looking forward to this controversial, uh, you know, over the weekend scenes that happened at both the Falcon and St. John's uh, game as well as the Lomagandi and uh, Churchill uh, games. Uh, yeah, in any case. Uh, so we're going to first and foremost be talking to Abigail uh, Kawanza. She's the Zimbabwe Rugby Referees Society uh, president, and she's going to be looking at a number of decisions. And she's going to also give her opinion on that one. So you don't want to go away from this one. In fact, uh, Rob and I were actually talking about it. Uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe we might also become refs <laughs> since we now know our own rules. But uh, beyond that, we are also going to be taking a look at the fixtures that happened over the weekend, looking at a little bit of review, uh, some interesting victories that came through, some very close-knit games as well uh, that, that were there, and that's also going to be important. Then the rankings, the rankings. Everybody has been asking the question, rankings, rankings, how do they work? 
Why do they work? Why are they even here? Well, we've now got the statistician in the building. And he's going to be explaining exactly how they work. It's not just easy peasy, three points, goal difference. No, 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 no. They are coefficients, they are ratios, something that I failed to do at O-Level when I was saying uh, <laughs> maths doesn't matter. But clearly, uh, today, now we see it actually does matter, Rob. Well, it's so important to have those stats and it's also to, to fold out exactly how it's working. It, it is complex. Um, there's obviously a lot of schools wondering, okay, well, why is that school above them? Because we've, we've won more games. It's all about the math, which uh, Ruvi and I are not going to pass on and we're going to pass it to the stat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But we've also got uh, the CBZ Rugby Development Initiative this coming weekend. Uh, there are going to be matches at Prince Edward, so you don't want to miss out on that as we look at some of the schools that will be participating. And then beyond that, we obviously have our presenter's license. I am quite livid with what happened at Loma Gandhi, and I'll be explaining exactly why. So all this and so much more right here on the CBZ Ruck Show. We take a break, and when we come back, we get straight into it. Every achievement, every record broken, every standing ovation, every proud moment is a product of an empowering relationship. At CBZ, we believe in the strength of partnerships and growing together. Together, we have collaborated in building roads, offices, homes, and bridges. We have partnered in the fields, have gone down shafts and blasted quarries, all while protecting assets, managing investments, safeguarding wealth, and helping you transact. We have supported big and small businesses and the ones in between with a helping hand or sound advice. As we celebrate what has been, we look ahead towards what can be. And while we can count how long we have been around, our achievements will always be quantified by your success. CBZ, partners for success. So welcome back to the CBZ Ruck Show. And as we told you, we are going to be talking to fine servants of the game, those that make sure that the game is going on somehow. We know that parents definitely make sure the game is going on by supporting their kids. We know the players are doing their part. And we also spoke to headmasters the last time round, as well as the super moms by the touchline. But now today we speak to those that are an important, a key element of the sport, and that is the refs themselves. And none other than uh, the president of the Zimbabwe Rugby Referees Society, my friend as well, Abigail Kawanza. Abigail, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Rimbo. All right. I know it's a very, very busy schedule that you had to kind of drop to squeeze us in. But um, as the CBZ Rug Show, a, a show that is continuously growing in leaps and bounds, uh, people want to understand rugby more. We're getting new viewers, people that uh, may not know the game necessarily that well. But um, first and foremost, maybe help people understand what is the Zimbabwe Rugby Referees Society and what is its main task uh, looking at rugby here in Zimbabwe. So basically, our main task is just to make sure rugby carries on. Um, there won't be any rugby without the centre man. So we, as a society, we want to make sure that the centre man is trained. Um, he's adequately equipped to actually run any game from your under-14s, your under-9s, all the way to senior level. So basically, you've got the likes of your precious Pazanis. Um, she's a level three referee. Um, but you've got uh, level one referees who are on there who've put in the hard work. Um, you get assessed every weekend. When you go out there, you're running out there. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is ticking. Um, so it's a lot of work that you have to put in. And you have to score um, really high on, on your assessments. Um, you've got laws. You've got fitness, all that. Um, uh, comes into into effect and then you um, get promoted. So we've got the Africa panel, then we've got your co contenders panel. These are all the guys who want to be in the Africa panel and they too put a lot of work. So generally, Abby, going down into the nitty gritties now, let's um, really, really go down into the thick of things. Generally, we don't like to lose. Um, as human beings, we don't like to lose. Mm. And uh, even if we win, uh, if things went our way and they shouldn't have, we just take the win. But as referees, as the Zimbabwe Rugby Referee Society, 
Uh, what are some of the things that you have generally put in place to try and ensure that our referees are getting better and better at doing games? And maybe also to highlight the fact how difficult it is to referee in schoolboy rugby in Zimbabwe where no TMOs, no other video assistant referees and yeah. <laughs> are available. So basically, what is in place right now to try and assist referees to grow? Um, one thing I want to do is thank CBZ because they have given us um, sponsorship this year. Mm -hmm. So we make sure, um, because we've got only the 12 top referees, mm -hmm. so you've got somebody traveling from Harare to go do Falcon game. Mm -hmm. You've got somebody going to Marondera. You've got all that. So they, it's, it's a lot of expense. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you can't get a coach to go out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and what CBZ has been doing is they've been filming each game. Mm -hmm. So we get that review process. Um, Matthias will come and say, Abby, please can you watch my game tonight? Mm -hmm. Or talent will come and say, oh, I had a great game. Please can you just, just review my game? Mm -hmm. So basically we are grateful that there is a lot of feedback. There's a lot of um, footage we can actually look at mm -hmm. and, and, and go through and give the, the referees um, feedback. How difficult do you think it is? I, I know you spoke about the atmosphere, you spoke about, you know, parents are shouting by the touchline and all these kinds of things, which we shouldn't be doing, by the way, anyway. <laughs> but just how difficult is it without most of the stuff that we would see on a world level? How difficult is it to get these decisions right? Somebody said to me the other day, you know how many errors are in a super rugby game? Mm -hmm. 73. Mm -hmm. On average, you're getting 70 errors in a game. Mm -hmm. that, these are from the players. Mm -hmm. Surely a referee is allowed <laughs> two or three. <laughs> you know, yeah. what, you'll never get everything right. You'll mm -hmm. never get um, a perfect game. Even mm -hmm. the highest, the best referee out there cannot walk off and say, listen, I had a perfect game. Mm -hmm. But you've got referees. You feel, e, referee, you missed a good game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but we want to make sure we minimize the errors. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically your fitness comes into play where you're supposed to be in the right position. Um, your law knowledge, your law interpretation. You might know the law book from, from the first page to the last page, but it's how you interpret it. You can say, ah, no, but listen, look at this angle, look at that angle. Mm -hmm. So all those things come into play and we want to make sure the referee ha minimizes the errors. Look, we are human beings, we are not machines. We don't work with artificial intelligence as yet. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, let's go straight into the first one. And, and the first one was quite contentious. Uh, that was the game that we're obviously going to review as well is uh, the St. John's and Falcon game. So St. John's coming out winners that, in that one. Uh, Matthias Befefe was the referee in that particular one. And there was an incident just before the halftime break. Uh, Falcon breaks out. Vuyani is coming through. And we're going to be showing the highlights of uh, that particular one. So let's take a look at that incident. And then Abby will give us her interpretation. <laughs> I don't know if that's commentator's curse or if he's just puts it that, but Falcon has decided not to take the 22 and it's hot stepping by Tegere. Tegere oh. has got some speed and he's got a burst of speed. He's got the outside. We've got, uh, oh, he steps inside. He Brilliant. Puts he still has Blume with him. Brilliant. He puts one forward toward Tegere. Tegere. What a try. They could go all the way. And I think. Whoa. Referee, what Damn. decision. What exciting. That could have been, play. that could have been the schoolboy try. Of the year 2023, up to date. All right, so Abby, you saw that one. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, you know what? What would have been brilliant is if we had like five different angles. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't. Um, I I would stick with the referee. I should stick with the referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would stick with the referee. It mm -hmm. does look like a held up. And mm -hmm. and you know what? When you are in doubt, mm -hmm. when you're in doubt, you cannot just give the try. Mm -hmm. um, from the angle where he was coming from, mm -hmm. you can't say he was a bit um, slow to the mark, mm -hmm. but uh, he got there and it looks like the elbow looks like it's there. It mm -hmm. looks like he's blocking the try. I would have blown, mm -hmm. held up. In that particular one. I would have, yes. Can I also argue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt it was a high tackle, though, as he was going down. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe could that not have been a penalty try at the same time? Because like it was literally the whitewash now that was mm -hmm. only holding it. Yeah, but how many people were in the picture, though? Mm -hmm. Because when you're blowing a penalty try, mm -hmm. you're saying without that tackle, mm -hmm. 
it was an obvious try. Mm -hmm. But you had so many, you had so many bodies there and everything. Mm -hmm. So it would, I wouldn't have, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe a, a penalty for the mm -hmm. high tackle, mm -hmm. but not a penalty try. All right. So yeah. that's the first one. Then we go into the second one. Uh, the second one was uh, between Hellenic and Watershed. And I think this one is more conclusive. All right, so that one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, mm. Rubimbo, mm -hmm. the ref was there. Mm -hmm. And um, if you carry on at the end of the clip, you mm -hmm. see him consulting his two ARs. Mm -hmm. um, the, the role of an assistant referee is to make sure we give three different angles. Basically, mm -hmm. we're giving the referee's angle and the two different ARs angles. So if he's consulting, mm -hmm. that means there's a little bit of doubt, mm -hmm. okay? So um, from what I understand, he was asking the referees, did it come off the chest? Mm -hmm. And the two ARs agreed mm -hmm. that it came off the chest. He was trying to gather the ball. It came off the chest. It went forward. Mm -hmm. So um, you could also say, why did then the player slow down? Because he knew he had knocked mm -hmm. it on and so forth. But I think um, what I want to commend the referee mm -hmm. is getting a, a second and a third opinion. This is another fine servant of the game. Uh, that is the Zimbabwe Rugby Referee Society President, Abigail Kaonza. She also does sit on the Zimbabwe Rugby Union Technical Committee, you know, dealing with coaches and things like that. So she's got her hands full. But anyway, there's so much more that is coming through on the CBZ Rug Show. Stay tuned. CBZ Bank brings you more convenience and more smiles. Introducing CBZ Remit. Now you can send and receive Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe without a bank account. No hassles, no stress. CBZ Remit is safe, secure, fast and reliable. Who can use CBZ Remit? Anyone. CBZ Remit is perfect for both CBZ account holders and non-account holders. To send or collect cash, all you need is your national ID or valid passport. US dollars or rands accepted. Receive your cash at any CBZ branch near you. 40 branches available nationwide for your convenience. CBZ Remit is very affordable. Charges only 2% of the money sent. Send and receive your Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe with CBZ Remit today. CBZ Bank, partners for success. Welcome back to the CBZ Rack Show. Reminder, make sure that you follow us on our social media platforms, Kara Sports. Uh, we want to see you there. And please let us know your comments and everything that is happening. Uh, we want to hear the good, the bad, and the rugby. That's mm -hmm. the most important. Mm -hmm. Right, checking out our results for this weekend. It was an incredible uh, weekend, Ruby. And uh, Ruby is going to unpack a couple of the results. I've also got uh, a couple of the big games that happened as well. But all rugby is uh, big games, Ruby. Oh, yes. All rugby is big games. I'll start off with arguably the biggest one now. I'm sure I'm being waited upon right now by the St. John's <laughs> College director. Uh, I called them lamb chops and lamb stew the last time. But this time around, uh, they went uh, from being lamb chops and lamb stew into being the rams that we know them to be. And they sent the mad dogs back down to Essie Godini uh, with a whimper with that 31-19 win. Now, it was uh, turning mad dogs into poodles, unfortunately, on uh, Honeyfield. So that was 31-19. Another big one happened in Marondera Peter House, beating St. George's College 24-17. So that was a good win for them. Loma Gandhi beat Churchill 20 points to 10 on their home field in Chinoy. Prince Edward went and got the result that they needed to maintain that undefeated run so far. So 29 points to eight against the elephants of Milton. Then another very, very tight one that happened just along Borodil Road. That was Hellenic winning 35-33 against Watershed College. I believe you saw uh, the controversial moment there on that particular try. Heritage came out with a 24-17 win over Midlands Christian College. So that's also a decent result mm. for them. Then a CBC uh, just put behind them all the defeats uh, that have come in the past two weeks with the railroading 59 uh, to nil win over Petra. A little bit of a shocker there. Also another shocker, Alan Wilson going to Hillcrest and receiving a little bit of a lesson in rugby, losing 42-24 uh, to Hillcrest. 
Uh, Goldridge were also in a no-nonsense mood, 51-0 against Southeastern College. Gateway and Eaglesville, the sure. biggest co-ed schools derby Messer. in Harare. And Gateway went to Eaglesville and won 20 points to 19. How dare they? But anyway, <laughs> we're going to be talking about that one. Ridings uh, wins uh, won rather 54 points to three against Nati and then Goromonzi with another huge hit uh, against Mutare Boys, winning 22 points to 12. So that was a huge win for Goromonzi against Mutare. And I think I'll start immediately on that particular um, uh, win. Rob, when we talk about Goromonzi, uh, at whether it was Kotko or Dairy Board Schools Rugby Festival, all those, uh, yeah, Goromonzi would be playing some of those lower tier schools. And Mutare Boys, I yes, mm. arguably yeah. over the years it has maybe just slipped down in terms of its might and power. But going up against Mutare Boys and winning, and not forgetting that they played in the CBZ Rugby Development Initiative in that sevens. And they won against Alan Wilson shows that Goromonzi is on the up right now. Well, that was the point I was just going to bring up. The CBZ rugby development is creating massive opportunities for these youngsters to come through the system, give, give them the opportunities. And I think this is where now uh, you're going to start seeing the performances of the CBZ development uh, coming through with kids coming through into Goromonzi and uh, Mutari and these. So it's so important that these events do happen and uh, the structures are put in. And well done to the CBZ uh, Bank for putting in the development program. Oh, yes. And um, I mean, we could say a whole lot more about that one, but obviously time eludes us. So let's mm. go straight into Lomagandi and Churchill. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, Churchill were unable to get to Lomagandi in time. They missed the bus. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, well, to miss the bus is an understatement. Uh, we, uh, we are going to discuss some of those things. But uh, on the field of play, I think Lomagandi just worked their plans really well. They gave quick ball out mm. there. Churchill arguably had the bigger boys, but they moved far too slow for Lomagandi. Lomagandi really had some quick boys within the back. I think their fullback, Gwenzi, was also an orchestrator. But also, let's not forget the man of the match, Munyaradzi yeah. Makoyana. He really had a good one as the scrum off. So he was able to supply the quick ball. Churchill were unable to deal with that, and it was always going to be tough for them to come out of it. So, uh, Lomagandi, well done to them. The Bisons are ramming the Bulldogs there. Well, what, uh, our producer was talking about how big those Lomagandi boys were, what mm. they feed the guys on uh, in Chinoy. We're not sure, but it must be Nyama and a lot of sons. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a lot of sons. Uh, that, that should come out, you know, <laughs> in the bank at Chinoy area. We know that that's a big farming area. So, I think they eat very well. <laughs> but um, uh, outside of the, the Lomagandi church, game I mean you are watching the the Falcon St. John's game uh, that was a big win St. John's needed that win otherwise they were going to be board meetings parent meetings oh, and all sorts of meetings oh, I think it would have been uh, quite devastating I think for management for the you know the, and and just seeing the the joy of the kids and um, they really needed that win and it was a win that I think has brought that school together I would say be careful of St. John's because now they've got their tails up they are on a high. Um, you know, that school, I managed to get into into the thick of things, in the circle of the first team, with the whole school around. The energy that they were giving was just, that win was incredible. Um, it was a game of two halves. It's such a, a, a cliche, but uh, Falcon in the first half were absolutely clinical. They were, they hammered when they had to hammer. They were scoring those tries when they had to. Second half came and, and uh, the number nine for St. John's Turp was outstanding. He, he uh, brought them back in the game with his kicking, mm -hmm. brought the game to 19-17 uh, mm -hmm. and then 10 minutes to go, St. Uh, St. John's put on the, put on the hook and uh, they ran. And right, uh, so let me Robert, tell you. Just to quickly cut in on the, do you think Falcon may have given up the game. Uh, yes, we know St. John's uh, definitely has a knack of coming from behind yeah. and just winning it. But do you think Falcon maybe could have done better to hold on to the result, uh, particularly within that second half? Look, cl clinically, uh, St. John's came back really well. I mean, obviously, that the kicking performance of the number nine uh, strip was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Clawed their way back. And uh, did, did uh, Falcon get a little bit complacent? Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but St. John's, let, let's give it to them. They showed incredible fight. Uh, they came back with everything they had. Their forwards were outstanding. The number four, Samuels, the captain, was absolutely outstanding. His, um, his performance was certainly leadership uh, performance. And then, uh, you know, the number 12 as well, Kruger, was 
outstanding. I mean, he he made a lot of breaks, and that just changed the 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 the, the pace of the game. They picked up the game, and that's where those tries came through. Mm -hmm. So, look. Probably one of the best games I've commentated, to be honest, to watch. And, and, and I mean, Jan and I almost lost our voices just from the excitement. And, and we had St. John's right next to us, um, you know, where we were commentating. And at times, we couldn't even hear. And, you know, Jan Ferrer is loud. Uh, we, I couldn't even hear Jan. And uh, that's just, it shows that they really needed this win. And a big, big ups to uh, St. John's. Oh, yes. There is another game that we're also, um, you know, uh, looking at uh, here. And... Um, that is uh, obviously the 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 Vale and Gateway one, yeah. biggest co-ed schools uh, derby. That one obviously had a lot riding on it, and I can tell you this: it had a lot riding on it because these are two former Sables coaches. They have coached at the highest level in the land. Yeah. All right, they've coached along the junior uh, structures. And they've done so well in terms of developing so many players that have become household names. And that's, of course, in the likes of Cyprian Mandenge yeah. for uh, the, the Eaglesville um, uh, guys. And congratulations, by the way, for getting that uh, women's cheetahs job uh, to Cyprian. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and then for Nsikelelo Sykes' Sibanda, also a veteran coach uh, within the structures of, of Zim. So to for Gateway to go to Eaglesville, out there and grab this win, it's absolutely massive. But what yeah, does it say for their huge. season? Because every time we've been going through their results, they are picking up the wins, Rob. Yeah. Well, just quickly talking about those coaches as well. Um, I've got to say that when I arrived back from New Zealand, uh, I think they'd already done about 20 years. So <laughs> a, big, a big credit to those two coaches as well. But talking about it's always just nice to see the competition this year is tight. Mm -hmm. um, and you're talking about, you know, you're looking at all the, the top-ranked teams Everything is tight. The games are tight. Uh, and, and that is fantastic for Zimbabwe rugby. And you're looking now down towards, you know, the Eaglesville Gateway. I mean, 2019, that is such an incredible score for Gateway. And to go to Eaglesville and win, ah, they, they need the credit. Oh, yeah. So finally, as we're wrapping it all up, I think a team that needed a win, particularly to just bounce back from the disappointment mm. down in S. Gordini was Peterhouse. Yes. Uh, winning 24-17 against St. George's. Clearly, it wasn't on a silver platter. Mm. Uh, St. George's really came out there wanting to win, but the Kings just finding that extra edge. Well, my head's on the block because I did uh, put St. George's right at the top in the beginning of the year. Mm. So my head's on the block and I have to talk to these coaches. Mm. But uh, no favoritism here. Uh, let me tell you, I think Peterhouse needed that win. It was a good win for them at home. Um, and obviously, it's just creating such a, a, a vibrant competition here in Zimbabwe. Uh, brought to you by the CBZ Rack Show. It's exciting stuff. I mean, 24-17, that's a clash right down to the wire again. And as we keep on saying, these games are so tight. Um, so anybody can win at any stage uh, of, of, of the season. And that's what's nice about this competition. So after taking a stab at what we thought about the games, here are the highlights. It forward and this time round, Makuyana. Oh goodness me, that's a beautiful kick. That's a tackle. Chipamadza, he dots it down. Chiriseri looks for the long pass to see Abranda on the outside. A little bit of a goose step decides an inside pop pass. Oh, that's a penalty. And that's offside for Lomagandi. A quick tap and go. Chiriseri looking for that pass. He decides to sell a dummy. A pick and go. And Churchill breakthrough. Now Churchill cannot afford a turnover of possession here. This is deep in their own 22. Chataika. Has been quite decent with this ball distribution so far. He hasn't gotten the cleanest of balls, I must say. And Lamagandi turnover possession here. A lovely attacking opportunity. Mpamadzi looking for the long pass. Catches Mashonganyika. Dodges one. And he gets it down. It is try time. Finds uh, his number 12, Nube. Nube out to Tekere. Tekere has got a bit of gas. Tekere two on one with the last man. And there he's finding his uh, pullback. It's Tekere. Tekere could go all the way. Tekere scores oh. in the corner. However, St. John's Flaff that's been missing. He's been good. Right now, Kruger gets the ball off a 8 9 15. And uh, now it looks like it's the fullback, Doran. Doran, he gets an offload. Falconer made to scramble in defense. Finds Majga. Recycled ball. 
Stirrup. There's there an overlap. Go. Here we go. Now it's to Kruger. Kruger's got wheels. Can Kruger get around? And Kruger takes on the man. He puts, takes a direct route to get a man outside. Falcon rolling over the wrong side of the ball. And they take the line side. And Stirrup. Stirrup gets the try to get St. John's. In With CBs attached, pay for whatever you want. Transacting on the go. With CBs attached, a dime of bills. Take insurance, special loan. With CBs attached, pay for whatever you want. Transacting on the go. So a number of significant plays uh, through those highlights that we got to see, uh, mouth-watering stuff. And it, it brings us uh, back to what we were discussing with uh, Abigail a little bit earlier there, mm -hmm. Rob, where, yeah, the, <laughs> there were the issues around that uh, contested try. But uh, let me get your opinion. Was it try or not? Well, I don't know if you listened to the commentary, but as he dabbed it through, uh, I... I he grabbed the ball and he was going over the, the try line. I thought it was going to be a try. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of counted my chickens before they hatched because uh, our very good uh, technical man, Ian, uh, managed to slow it down mm -hmm. and you see the arm go under the ball. Um, I mean, that, that is why the CBZ Raksha is so important, Ruby, that uh, we can actually bring uh, the technical side of it to actually say, guys, it wasn't a try. I mean, I was shocked yesterday when he pulled me into his office and he said, look at this. Uh, and that basically just, um, it really... Uh, solidified it wasn't a try oh yes and uh, that's exactly what uh, we also heard uh, from abigail as she gave us her mm. own thoughts around that and there was the other one which was also quite uh, uh, controversial mm. but she also gave her uh, technical analysis on that one we would also love to hear your thoughts around that i know that there are uh, coaches that watch this i know that there are referees as well uh, that watch that so would love to hear your thoughts on that now that we've uh, said the results we've uh, uh, given our analysis, I think the things that matter the most are what are coming up next. We're going to be giving you the rankings and more importantly, giving you the explanation around how the rankings are working. So we do have our man Nyasha Mtseta who is in studio uh, today to actually explain what the rankings are all about and how they are compiled. CBZ Bank brings you more convenience and more smiles. Introducing CBZ Permit. Now you can send and receive Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe without a bank account. No hassles, no stress. CBZ Remit is safe, secure, fast and reliable. Who can use CBZ Remit? Anyone. CBZ Remit is perfect for both CBZ account holders and non-account holders. To send or collect cash, all you need is your national ID or valid passport. US dollars or rands accepted. Receive your cash at any CBZ branch near you. 40 branches available nationwide for your convenience. CBZ Remit is very affordable. Charges only 2% of the money sent. Send and receive your Forex anywhere in Zimbabwe with CBZ Remit today. CBZ Bank, partners for success.
So that was the action that happened over the weekend, some interesting results. And obviously with interesting results also means that rankings also come into play. So let's uh, take a look at how it stands right now. Prince Edward undefeated, and so there's no question about it. They sit on top. St. John's College with that uh, very good win against Falcon come into second. Loma Gandhi are in third. Peter House in fourth with also a good win against St. George's. Falcon College uh, now come through to fifth. Uh, number six is St. George's College, who, who dropped down as well. Uh, number seven is Churchill, Christian Brothers College at number eight, Wise Owl at number nine, and Milton High School, unfortunately losing on home turf against PE in number 10. But I've got a man who's important to making sure that these rankings uh, come together and actually make sense. And that's the reason why we brought him in, because we've been seeing some of your comments and uh, asking, so how are these rankings working? Our team's dropping, our team's coming up. And so we've got the at stat a statistician, uh, the man who did maths and clearly passed it at O and A level. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is Nyasha Muteta. Nyasha, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us on the CBZ Rack Show. No, thank you for having me. All right. So let's start off first and foremost. Uh, <laughs> we've got rankings. So basically, yeah. how do we come up with these rankings how do we do it okay uh <clears throat> before we start matt nothing personal yeah okay. uh, <laughs> it's I've, just I've, business <laughs> I've, I've seen the comments yeah yeah so we try to adopt the world rugby ranking system right mm -hmm. uh, using actually identical calculations mm -hmm. right so it's a points exchange system mm -hmm. right so typically we try give more points for beating a uh, a stronger team mm -hmm. Um, if, if, if a really weak team loses to a really strong team, um, often no teams uh, uh, gain points or lose points, right? No mm -hmm. points are, are exchanged. But um, if, if, if the converse ha happens, so if a really strong team loses to a weak team, they gain a lot of points, right? So that's the general premise. We mm -hmm. try to keep it fair, but uh, <laughs> we are aware people haven't been happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, all right. Uh, people, I think, in general haven't been happy because... Um, I think we're used to what we see, uh, the Premier League and, and so on, yeah. whereby a team wins, yeah. they just get maybe arguably their three points, uh, also their goal difference or points are scored and so on. And, and so maybe uh, take us down into what World Rugby actually uses. Is it a coefficient? What ratio? What, what exactly is it called as a system? Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, it, it is very different from... Uh, Premier League or whatnot. Uh, the the reason, firstly, I'll start with the reason we chose this way. Um, in school boy rugby, not all teams play each other, mm -hmm. right? So that's made it very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, if if every team played each other home and away, honestly, this would be the easiest job. Three points, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but but unfortunately, that's not the way Zim schools rugby is structured, right? Mm -hmm. So the way it works is, you get points on a scale. Uh, this is hopefully I can explain the mm. the math, but uh, there's th there are three lines that we have right. There's a line for the strong team, which mm. which is uh, depending on this. Okay, mm -hmm. right. You have your your main axis, which is your the, the points we mm. we we give, and then at, at the bottom we have the difference in rankings between the teams, right? Mm -hmm. So to give you an example. Um, uh, with 82 points, that's uh, Prince Edward will will rank like pretty pretty high up on the scale, and let's say they play St John's right, and assuming there's a five point there's a five point difference right, so we put that five points on the bottom axis, we put uh, the points they can gain on the top axis right, mm -hmm. um, so this is the hopefully you're still following. I know it's hard to follow mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so um, a team like like Prince Edward which is strong will have the top line. Right, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then we have a middle line for just in case there's a draw, and then we have a bottom line for the for the weak team. Mm -hmm. So, if the stronger team uh, wins, they often fall still on the top line, but a little bit shallower, which means they get l less points. Right, so lower lower down the y-axis. Okay. Uh, but then, if we move um, if we move across, and let's say the weaker team wins, right, they get pushed up. Right, mm -hmm. so they they are able to gain more points. So yes, it is a a coefficient system uh, based on the where you land on the line. I know that's not the easiest uh, explanation to follow, but uh, it uh, honestly um, it it makes sense when when you look at the the math. Uh, and and you know generally people have been calling for what you 
you actually said is the most difficult part about it, which is each team playing each team, getting into tiers, getting yeah. into divisions and things like that. Uh, how how much easier will that make your job? Uh, maybe the moment that we do have a substantive league on all tiers and levels where we've got a, a, a premier league, yeah. so to speak, a D1, a D2 and so on. So much easier. Um, I think all the all the comments, all the all the hate comments will stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll make it so much easier. But I understand rugby because it's a physical game. You know, um, no one wants to watch a sixty nil game. You know, um, I, I wouldn't enjoy it. I'm sure even you guys wouldn't enjoy it. Right, so we we do want a tougher game. So I do think a tiered system one would make it more entertaining. Uh, the calculations become. Um, more representative, mm -hmm. right? Um, which is like the calculations are easy, but they may not be as representative as we'd like them to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe just a, a quick one, which I would obviously be putting you on the spot. Yeah. So can we say it would be somewhat unfortunate or relatively unfair uh, for a school like Pidaos, which is most probably just going to play arguably the strongest two schools right now, and regardless of them winning or losing, they can still maintain a top 10 finish by the time they finish the season. Is it fair? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is on the spot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, would, I would argue that it is fair, um, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they have a fixture against Prince Edward. Um, well, we are advocating for that one. Okay. We're, we're, we're pushing for it. Uh, I've heard that discussions are underway. And uh, hopefully <laughs> Dave Kirkman, Sean D'Souza, as well as the headmasters, uh, John Trafford. Uh, yes, let's put good use to that surname, uh, Mr. Trafford. Old Trafford, Manchester United, play everyone, win. So uh, John Trafford and uh, Mr. Sora, I'm sure can discuss the terms around that. So hopefully that will happen. Yeah, yeah. But uh, to answer your question, yes, yes, I do believe it is fair because um, we do expect them to beat the lower ranked teams and I have no mm -hmm. doubt about that. And mm -hmm. because of the nature of rugby, I don't believe in the necessary risk of mm -hmm. playing a team that you can't mm -hmm. beat, but then now you lose your best player, you mm -hmm. know. So there, there are pros and cons, but I mean, Pilas plays good quality rugby. Actually, mm -hmm. all the top 10 teams, I think, play quality rugby. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's fair. All right. Well, generally, it is fair. So, Nyasha, before I do let you go, uh, I mean, you've just generally been doing the stats. Who is your money on? Do you think Prince Edward can actually be toppled over? I, I mean, looking at the running of fixtures that they do have left, people would argue that they should be able to beat all of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's no favoritism here. Yeah. But uh, from a purely statistical standpoint, uh, they are better on every uh, measurable metric. So... Mm -hmm. I, it'll be very unlikely that they lose. All right. So if you are a betting man, then Nyasha would be your best friend. Because <laughs> clearly all of the stats and the metrics uh, go in his uh, direction and what he has been able to do. So Nyasha, thank you so much for coming through and clarifying that it is a slightly complicated system, but one which can be understood. So using an XY axis, for those that felt a uh, simultaneous equation had absolutely no bearing in life, well, here it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> and we get to see this XY and stuff and, and, and so on. But thank yeah. you so much for coming through to the CBZ Workshop. No, thanks for having me. And so there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from our Athstat statistician, Nyasha Mutseta, just explaining to us how the rankings are working. It's nothing personal, guys. It's just stats. And just putting the numbers together to understand the coefficient ratios, the, uh, the, the axes upon which teams are ranked and put, and this will ultimately determine who then comes out uh, coming up on top or losing their place in that regard. So it's really not just about winning, but it's also about who you win against, who you play against, which will then ultimately determine where you end up. So that's it for the rankings and the stats. Stay logged on to the CBZ Ruck Show. With CBZ Touch, pay for whatever you want, transacting on the go. With CBZ Touch, a dad on my bills, take an insurance special loan. With CBZ Touch, pay for whatever you want, transacting on the go. With CBZ Touch, a dad on my bills, take an insurance special loan. 
All right, so uh, a very big thank you to Nyasha Mteta there for at least trying <laughs> to explain to us uh, what exactly is going on. Of course, we do have a more basic understanding now of what exactly is being used from coefficients, ratios, um, how, yes, you can win uh, against a particular team, but not necessarily mm. have a, such a rise within the rankings or you can win and actually go down uh, because of <laughs> the ranking of that particular team. So pretty interesting how that's done. Oh, there was a lot of questions about this, uh, about the rankings of uh, why on top, who's on top. But as we said, it's all math. It's all mathematics. And uh, we're really now going to stay out of it. And that's when you actually did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually talking about how our rankings work and ultimately how we are looking forward to a substantive uh, league being finally established. Uh, there is one which is literally brewing uh, under the top tier schools right now, and that's the CBZ Bank Rugby Development, no. uh, you know, schools rugby sevens league. And uh, that one is now going into its second week. Oh my gosh, uh, the first week was good. Yeah. Goromonzi beat uh, Alan Wilson. I think that is not going to go down well uh, <laughs> with uh, with Lisiwa Saranevu. I mean, she's. Uh, one of the coaches that is there, she's also coaching uh, the women's disabled. So I'm sure she was very distraught at that d defeat. But let's look at some of the schools that are there, though, uh, Rob. Uh, interesting to note. So Goromonzi right mm. uh, right up there. Alan Wilson have uh, checked in a team. Ellis Robbins have got some really good history when it comes to, to rugby. They're present, not so much, but their history is mm. good. And that is what the CBZ Rugby Development Initiative yeah. is all about. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you're looking at uh, the CBZ Bank Development uh, Sevens, it's happening at Prince Edward. That's coming up uh, on the 17th of June this Saturday. Uh, I love their hashtag, Rugby Access for All. I mean, that is incredible. This is what it's about, uh, giving all kids an opportunity to get that op chance to be seen. Who knows? They could get a contract and uh, get a bursary from a school that's going to change their lives forever. Oh, yes. Well, actually, talking about that access for all, we've got a number of high-density schools that are here. So Warren Park High, Zivarasekwa, Mbare High, Kwadzana High, Glenview One, all of these are involved within this. Now, the beauty about going to high-density schools is you've got numbers for days. Yeah, you and once you've got numbers, that means the level of competition, the quality of players that you end up producing uh, becomes absolutely fantastic. And so uh, I did hear, I did hear rumors going mm -hmm. around the, the rumor mill there, uh, Rob, is that a lot of private schools are going to be there. Their coaches are going to be there in order to see if they can spot some new talent there. So, uh, all right. He, he, yeah. he, simmered his, he simmered his wording down there a little mm. bit, but that's the opportunity. We want the, 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 the high schools and, and, the, and the, the bigger schools to go to that event because the kids need an opportunity. They need to be seen. And if a kid does step up and he, and he produces the goods, good on him. Good on him uh, to, be, to be given the opportunity. Uh, Ruvi, I had an opportunity in South Africa for six years to spend time uh, developing and doing rural uh, festivals and, and with SA Rugby Legends, uh, the Kawa Week, what, uh, whatever it was. And let me tell you, uh, the talent out there is, there's oodles of talent out there. And uh, we've got to get and CBZ Bank, Good on you. Obviously, Kara Sport as well. Just great stuff. Uh, and make sure you get down to Prince Edward School this weekend, Saturday. It's going to be uh, incredible stuff. Welcome back to the CBZ Ruck Show and uh, exciting stuff. We've got the Nutri Active Play of the Week. And uh, let me tell you, that St. John's Falcon uh, disallowed try. Mm. <laughs> oh, if it wasn't for Ian, in my mind, yeah. that was a try. Uh, well, look, I, I think um, <laughs> we had discussions with uh, with uh, Abigail over this and, and everything. And I had my own theories and whether it was a high tackle and what, 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 but... It seems like yeah. the tackle was fair. It seems like the hold-up was fair. Uh, but the play itself was 
absolutely sure. phenomenal. The way that they were able to come from literally their own 22 up until that particular point was phenomenal. If you didn't see it, We've got time. Uh, oh, he steps inside. He Brilliant. Puts him back. He still has Blueberry with him. Brilliant. He, he puts one ball into it to get it. Get what it. a try. They could go all the way. And I think. Whoa. Referee. Damn. What decision. What. Well, coming back to that, what an incredible almost try. Uh, I've, I've got to say that uh, Ian called me to his uh, office yesterday, but Kailani, our uh, technical guy in the background who does incredible work here on the CBZ Rack Show, he is the man that uh, pinpointed that millimeter of a decision. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and you know what? Uh, Maybe could there have been a better decision? Do you think Oof. that uh, the number 15 there, after having broken through all of those tackles, maybe could have just added a bit more juice really? in the tank? Or maybe can we just say that Tigere was a little bit too far behind, so he had to make the kick yeah. to try and get him to advance. But, well, look, if, if, <laughs> if, yeah. But, but look at that skill. I mean, he came mm. off his left foot, uh, obviously uh, looking at the space and then dad the ball through. The vision mm. of uh, that was just absolutely incredible. Mm. Uh, we are checking out our uh, Nutri-Active Kara Sports Worldwide Tracker. Now, this is exciting where we're tracking players from across in South Africa, wherever they are, and uh, giving them props at schoolboy level to see where they are. Uh, we've got some big names, preferably from Kingswood. Uh, I think James and Stanley's got a house here in, uh, in, in Harare or in Zimbabwe, because uh, he seems to be pulling a lot of the, the Zimbos to uh, South Africa. I watched a lot of the Zimbos last year when I was uh, commentating on Super Sports Schools, and the, uh, the quality that he's bringing out from here yeah, today is, is incredible. Oh, yes, and uh, one in particular is Tapiwa Janda, uh, having come through from Peter yeah. House. Uh, he made the Academy Week side this year. He's at Kingswood. So maybe just a slight look into the Kingswood rugby program. Uh, just how significant are they? Uh, maybe just using last year. We aren't too sure about this year. But how significant are they within the rugby space? in South Africa? Well, they have got someone like James Wynn Stanley who is part of the SA Schools um, A side, uh, SA School side, should I say, and uh, he is adding a, a massive value. Oh, he was at Hudson Park. He turned Hudson Park around incredibly, which is a co-ed school, turned them around and they became uh, one of the forefronts beating uh, the all-boys schools, Dale College, Salborn College, mm -hmm. all those schools. So he certainly is uh, an astute coach. I've spent a lot of time with him as well. Um, he is putting those programs in to Kingswood which are making a big difference and remember he's getting all that quality training and exposure at SA schools obviously he's spending time probably with uh, the Springboks as well and um, so he's getting that quality which is coming down now and infiltrating into Kingswood so uh, look certainly astute and uh, they've got their systems in place at Kingswood. Oh yes and one more player that we are going to be looking at within this segment is Sasha uh, Kadira an mm. eighth man Absolutely massive boy uh, going to Maritzburg College. He's a former St. George's, um, you know, player. And, and I think we've seen quite a number of St. George's players uh, that are doing pretty well outside of the four uh, borders of this country. And uh, he comes through. He's actually the college head boy yeah. uh, this time round. And uh, he's only the third black head boy in the 160-year history oh. of the school. The last blackhead boy before him was the now Sharks and a Springbok prop. That's Ntutu Ko Mchunu. And uh, definitely trailing and following in the footsteps of uh, some significant uh, uh, people there. Well, you're just reading those stats. Is that the next Sia Kulisi? You know, just looking at that, looking at the quality. He's played Grand Coma in the 16s. He's been through all the systems of the Sharks. Is that the next year? I mean, it, it, it sounds like uh, this could be the next captain of the Springboks, the way, the way he's going. So, Ruvi, we're very proud of uh, Sasha Kadira. I mean, congratulations to you as well, Sasha. Hopefully you watch this. You share the CBZ Ruck show all over uh, Durban and across South Africa. But from us, we're just going to say, keep on the push. And we look forward to watching you wear the green and gold in a couple of years' time. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, basically, that is our Nutri-Active uh, Kairos Worldwide Tracker, as well as our Nutri-Active uh, Play of the Week. Uh, make sure you tune in every single week, mm -hmm. every single episode, because we will have one of those for you. But, hey, 
Surely, surely, surely. You could have dived better, son, to get it. <laughs> In any case, uh, we move out of that. Uh, we are going to be going into our uh, presenter's license, which will be coming right after this. Welcome back to the CBZ Rack Show. Uh, my name is Robbie and this is Ruby. It is now the presenter's license where we can say what we want, when we want, and uh, about when we want, and then the backlash comes on, uh, <laughs> on our social media. And remember to follow us all on Cairo Sports. Uh, there's exciting stuff as well. What, what's uh, your opinion of, uh, what do you want to say? He's got a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got far too much to say. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. <laughs> uh, but okay, fine. Um, mine comes back to Loma Gandhi Churchill. Um, I think uh, that game, which was potentially explosive, was ultimately turned into a little bit of a downer mm. because of some of the frustrations that ended up surrounding the game. So for those that may not know, because we tried to keep it on hush as we were doing commentary, is the fact that Churchill were late. Um, Churchill were late for the match uh, because of bus trouble. Uh, bus trouble which could have been avoided and which could have been administratively dealt with mm. um, had there been no back and forths which were so easy to deal with. Mm. Uh, I feel, number one, it was a disservice to some of the sponsors that have come through yeah. to make Churchill look uh, good, particularly deck them out within the kids, as well as some of the effort, in fact, not some, all of the effort that the kids put into practice throughout mm. a week in order to prepare for a match. I think it's a massive disservice. And we uh, that are old enough to know the importance of this. Those that have gone through the system, in particular as old boys, we need to step in. I'm an old boy myself. I was not happy because in all my time at Churchill, we never, ever failed yeah. to, to, to turn up to a fixture on time. Well, Ruby, that's an administrative problem. Uh, you know, if you're looking at uh, the build-up to that game, it was a big mm. game. I mean, mm. it's, uh, you know, you're looking at a big clash, Loma Gunny on, an, on a high, Churchill coming to, mm. to do some damage there. Uh, that was a bus ticket to lose mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, um, the preparation that you have for a rugby game starts 48 hours, sometimes a week before. And mm -hmm. uh, now you, you, you're late for a game. It just, it's just unacceptable, to be totally honest. That's my opinion from an outsider. Um, I think a couple of heads need, need to be pulled in and really reprimanded for that mm -hmm. uh, because the disservice, as you say, was to the sponsors, to the school, and especially to the coaches and the kids mm -hmm. because the coach really isn't there to organize a bus. Mm -hmm. He's there to coach. Oh, yes. Um, so, that's so what is, the... yeah, pull your socks up, guys. Oh, yes, most definitely. And uh, hopefully we as old boys can try and step in to avoid some of these issues. Yeah. Maybe let's try and make sure uh, the buses are fixed. Let's try and make sure that yeah. the fuel is there in order to travel. Let's uh, uh, try and be involved in any kind of way to try and help this because I know it's quite difficult uh, to organize sport, particularly within public schools where funds are not necessarily as much as you would want them to be. But in any case, I do believe that administratively we can do better. More should be done. And I think it comes back to what we featured the yeah. last time round. Headmasters need to be involved. Yeah. And so I call out to the headmaster of Churchill High School, uh, let us see more involvement, let us see more uh, stringent issues. Those that are below you yeah. need to answer to you as to why that was a potential level of embarrassment uh, out there. But you've also yeah. got something uh, quite interesting you want to talk well, about. Well, you know, my experience at uh, St. John's versus Falcon was, was incredible. You know, like I said, uh, commentating that game, number one, was a privilege. Um, mm -hmm. It really was a privilege. Um, just to be experiencing how Falcon played in the first half and then the clawback by St. John's. It showed incredible determination and it was a school that was reeling for a win. Um, mm -hmm. So I've just got to say to the people that went out there, um, to the supporters from both sides, uh, Rugby One was the winner of the day there. Um, and I've just got to say congratulations to both teams who put on an incredible uh, spectacle of rugby on Saturday. All right, before we seal this off, uh, Robbie, because we're just about to get going, um, your general experience in terms of atmospheres, I know there was a huge one in Marondera for the yeah. Pidal St. George's game. Uh, there was a huge one where you Massive. were, Falcon St. John's. 
there was also a pretty good crowd as well that came out. I think especially when the school kids are now just singing the war cries and it's getting more and more difficult for us to do the commentary sure. and everything like that. I think it's a happy space even for us. We're like, okay, we can't hear each other, but guess what? This is exactly the atmosphere we're looking forward to. Well, well, like I said, I managed to get into the St. John's huddle after the game and the school had now surrounded them. It was electric. I mean, I, I can't explain to you. I actually had goosebumps, just, just that feel. And what, uh, the cameraman, Isaiah, that was with me when we walked, I said, ish, that was hectic. <laughs> because the energy, and you just felt that energy, the, the, the win was positive. But I think for the school and what it did there was exciting. And as you're saying, just the excitement of and the atmosphere that the, the, the supporters are bringing to the rugby, and that's what we're bringing here on the CBZ Rack Show, is incredible. Well done. All right. Uh, so as we're sealing off the show, just a reminder, many of you will be asking, what happened to the upcoming fixtures? There are no upcoming fixtures. It is <laughs> going to be half term uh, this time around. So many of the schools are going on half term. But we uh, are definitely going to be bringing you some action from the CBZ uh, Rugby Development Initiative. There are some schools who are, are still sticking behind yeah. and making sure that they put in the grind and, and sit on the uh, big boys, big girls uh, table as well. So make sure you come out to Prince Edward. Remember, 17th of June, starting at 9 a.m. at Prince Edward, the CBZ uh, Rugby uh, Development Development uh, Sevens League, and believe me, it's going to be exciting action. Yeah. But generally, that brings us to the end of the CBZ Rug Show. Well, it's hashtag rugby access for all. Check that out, uh, as well as obviously big shout out again, CBZ Bank for the CBZ Rug Show. Uh, you can watch it all on our social media platforms, Kara Sports, from Ruvi and myself. We're going to catch you next week. Cheers from us.